one of these when he earned his ace status. He was the first man to break the sound barrier. And if I'm under one of these, there's only one place I could be, and that's Milton, West Virginia. Milton's famous for two things, Blinko Glass Company and its covered bridge. There were actually two covered bridges, but the one that's going to be our subject today is sadly no longer with us. I'm going to go check it out. Milton Covered Bridge. It's the last of the two bridges that were once here in Milton. This bridge was built in 1875. It's a single span bridge and 112 feet long, making it one of the last standing in the United States. Now we're at the site of the second covered bridge in Milton. This bridge is actually the focus point of today's video. The town here wasn't always called Milton. Around the time of the Civil War, it was called Mud Bridge, after the bridge that used to sit here spanning the Mud River. During the Civil War, the road that was here was known as the James River Turnpike. It was an important supply route for both the Union and Confederate armies, so both wanted control of this bridge. So on April 3, 1863, the forces met and a skirmish occurred. Today, the battle is remembered as the Battle of Mud Bridge. The forces that met here were Captain Dove's 2nd West Virginia Cavalry and General Jenkins' 36th Virginia Infantry. The battle resulted in 12 Confederate deaths and 7 Confederate horses stolen, giving victory to the Union. However, the Confederates were not done. Captain Carpenter returned with Swan's Virginia Cavalry, attempting once more to destroy the Mud Bridge. This battle resulted in the death of an additional rebel soldier and the capture of 30 Confederate horses, sealing the victory for the Union on this day. While guarding the bridge, the Union Army was quartered just up the hill at Union Baptist Church. It's not very far. Let's go take a short hike and see what's left. This is the historic Union Baptist Church. The Union not only lived here, but they also used it as a hospital to tend their wounded. They stayed here the duration of the war and didn't give it back to the church members until the end. The building did suffer some damage, as you can see from the bullet holes still visible in the brick today. Thanks for coming along. It's getting kind of cold, so I'm gonna head back to the house for a wrap up. you to come back for a wrap up was because there's a few more things I want to share with you. One is that the Battle of Mud Bridge wasn't the only incident that happened in that area. Private Wiseman, who was stationed there, wrote to a local newspaper about a battle that happened on June 8, 1864. Here's a portion of it. We are stationed in something of a fortified position on the bank of Mud River. We have reason to believe there is just as good fighting material here as ever raised a rifle to the shoulder. There is some secesh prowling through the country some miles away we have slept on our arms three nights since here. A squad of our cavalry went up the river some distance a few days since and brought back one of their numbers dead and two wounded by the bushwhackers who are hated even by sympathizers here. Isn't that interesting? Secondly, my great-great-great-grandfather, Joseph Minner, was a member of the 2nd West Virginia Cavalry and fought at the Battle of Mud Bridge. And lastly, I wanted to share this family heirloom with you. It's an authentic 1840 Civil War cavalry saber, just like they would have used at my bridge. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more of Doodlebug's hiking and history, check out my brand new website at this address. Hope you learned something. Come back soon.